Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is the day one of my 15 days of Python series. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing like the preliminary introduction, introducing you to the world of Python. We are going to be doing the introduction of Python and looking at the advantages of Python. Um, we'll be installing Python. So I'm going to walk you through that. You're going to set up your environment and um, see how that goes. I'm just going to walk you through step by step on how you can do that. And for the first time, we're going to be writing the first code. Just very, very basic code. Print, hello world. And you're going to be doing your first scripting in Python. And you'll also be understanding the basic syntax, um, comment, indentation, variables, and data types. And finally, in this video, we will also uh, be using basic input and output functions. But just like an introduction to Python, one of the questions people ask is, what is Python? Python is really a high-level um, interpreted programming language. It's very, very known for its readability and simplicity. It was created by Gudo Van Rossum. And the first time Python was released was in 1991. Um, so the thing about Python and why it is well known and everybody almost wants to use Python is because it's very, very readable. It's readability and is notable for significant white space. Again about Python is that it supports multiple programming paradigms. So including procedural programming, object-oriented programming, functional programming, which emphasize the application of functions without changing state of data. And all of this make Python a very, very appreciated programming language and almost everybody wants to use Python. The question again, you may be asking, why learn Python? First is that Python is easy to read and write. That's the first reason why you should learn Python. Unlike other programming language, Python is really very, very clear and concise. It's very readable. Even if you are not a developer, if Python were to be your first programming language, it's very, very easy to read, it's easy to understand, and it's just resembling the natural language when you are reading Python. So this simplicity allows developers to focus on solving problems rather than worrying about the complexity of the syntax they need to use for the particular project that they are working on. And secondly, Python has this standard library. It comes with different modules for handling different files, um, system calls, sockets, and even interface to graphical user interface toolkit um, when you're working with Python, which is what we're going to be seeing in the 15 days of Python all across. And again, Python has a very, very robust community support. The community support of Python makes it very, very um, great, and everybody wants to learn Python. A vibrant community and what that means is that numerous third party packages are available via the python package index and is versatile across various applications and you have different open source packages you can download you can use for your project for your tasks and all the things that you are doing and web development frameworks um, like django and and flakes data science and machine learning libraries like numpy pandas matplos tensorflow automation and scripting, um, all of these repetitive tasks are efficiently done with Python. Even game development is very, very easy to, to be done with Python. And the final one which I have here is the fact that Python is portable across platforms. So it runs seamlessly. If, if you're using Python on Windows, you're using Python on Mac OS, you're using Python on Linux, and even small devices, Python can easily be packaged across system and you can easily um, blend out whichever system you're using. And I'm going to be walking you through how you can do the installation of Python within your environment and set it up and you get ready for use. And after that, we're going to be writing our first script. Let's go over to our browser. So I'm in python.org and in python.org, we're going to be downloading Python for our Windows environment. You can do similar thing for Mac environment, but because the majority of people use Windows, I'm going to be using Windows for uh, my demo here. And every other thing I'm going to be doing all across this course will be done on Windows, just to say so. It, it covers for the vast majority of people. I'm going to come here and click on download this as of today. This is the latest version that I'm downloading, version 3.1, 3.0. Just click on download and that will download quickly. And when I go to my download part and just double click on this, when I double click on that, I'm going to say um, use admin privileges, add Python extension to parts, and I'm just going to custom install. 
by default all these are selected i'm going to leave them selected i'll go to next install python for all users so my location is properly set i'm just going to click on install this here all right it shows successful but how do you confirm if python is actually on your device i'm going to close this and come to search i'm just going to do use my command prompt do cmd i'll say python it shows you that immediately that python is already installed and you can see all of all of these here i could go a step further to say i want to print um hello world and when i print hello world it brings out hello world to me now this could be a problem i'm able to do this here but sometimes you will need an editor to be able to use python effectively an editor helps your code to be well organized and makes it more presentable for this whole project and everything I'm going to be working on, I'll be using PyCharm. PyCharm is quite a popular one when it comes to editors out there. And I'm going to open my next screen and just type PyCharm download. I'll click on the first. Um, I'm just going to accept all. For Windows, I want to download for Windows, but I could go down here and see PyCharm the community edition. I'm downloading the community edition and it's free for built on built on open source so click on this it's going to take a little while and after that i'm just going to go and complete the installation pycharm is done i go to my downloads and i double click on my installation package i go to next next you could choose to add a shortcut or you you might not and i could just install this straight away all right, so I'm going to run the PyCharm Community Edition and click on Finish. And when I click on that, it's going to open the windows for PyCharm. I confirm and I continue. Um, just to help them improve the services, I could say I want to send anonymously. So I could say new project. I'm working on a new project and I'm just going to leave it here and I call it 15 days of Python. Good and I can create the new project I'm working on. All right, my environment is up and running, everything is set and I could start writing my code. So under my 15 days of Python, I could create a new a new folder um, called my new directory. I'm going to call it day one. And under day one, we're going to do all of the scripting that we need to do in day one and we're going to come back to it. Yeah, back to the presentation. I'm going to be showing you basic syntax and structure just to give you like that that basics before we start coding in our um, integrated environment. The basic syntax and structure of Python script. First, you need to know about comments. We could write comments within our code blocks. We have the single line comment that start with just the simple hashtag. You can just put hashtag and you put comment for various reasons. You want to remember what you're doing on the code and want to explain what the code is doing. You just want to leave comment and this comment with the hashtag, it could leave a single line of comment, but you could have other use cases where you need to write multi-line comments using triple quotes and using triple quotes, you can write multi-line comment in the brief code I have here. You could see that um, here you have the single line comment and underneath you have the multi-line comment. So the multi-line comment can come like when you want to write maybe paragraphs, you want to write more comments that you can contain in a single line comment. You could do that on Python. The second one is indentation. Python uses indentation a lot. Um, it uses it to define the blocks of code. And typically four, four spaces are used for each indentation level. And the consistent indentation is very, very important uh, as it affects the program's logic. For some programming language, indentation could be just to make the code look more presentable. Indentation in Python, however, it has impact on the code. A consistent indentation affects the program's logic. Like the script I have below, you see Python and I have a conditional statement to say if true, if this exists, print this is indented and you have the four line, the, the four spaces there, and um, which shows the indentation, and that is how it's done on, on Python. What you're going to be working with most of the times is variable. Variables are used to store data, and they do not require explicit declaration. Unlike some programming language, you need to define the variable, you need to give the variable, the variable type, you need to um, give the number of character for the variables, you need to do a couple of things, but in Python, it's just straight up. 
to say name is equal to python name in this case is a variable and you have age is a variable so the variable could hold strings and it could also hold integers in this first case you have the name holding python and you have the age holding integers or whole numbers and you have the data type i made reference to it slightly in the previous slide string data type string normal text you could have you have the integer um, integer data type the tens the ones the twos the 500 the 1000 these are all integers and you have the float or you could also call it the decimal the numeric 10 points all of the decimals they are float and you have the boolean the boolean are true or false the binaries and these are all supported within python so python supports each of these data type when you're working with the language the basic input and output we use input to take in user input and print to display output it is a simple case of in and out so with input you the user can put an input and with print you can see what the result is i have a variable here and the variable is taking an input the input is taken is your name the username and this string here is just trying to tell you the user what you need to do it's like an instruction enter your name when you enter your name when you run the code it prints hello your name so we use input and also print to display user input from python so if for instance the name is dave when i input this into this place what is going to print out is hello dave that is what is going to be printed out we're going to be doing our first exercise on python in this exercise we're going to write a python script that asks the user for their name and age then print a message saying how old they will be in five years it's a little tricky because it requires a little bit of mathematics and calculation we are going to use this to kind of get started on python i'm going to go over to my environment now under my day one i'm going to create a new file and the new is going to be a python file and i would call it exercise exercise one or just use an underscore i call it exercise zero one in our exercise don't forget what the question is the question is to write a python script that asks the user for their name and age from here we know that we are going to have an input the user is going to give us an input of their name and their age then we are going to have a print statement um, because of this we're going to have a print because we need something to come out of that a message saying how old are you you're going to put your age and we're going to ask a question and know how they are going to be in five years so the first thing we're going to do is to have our variable called name 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 will take an input and the input is going to come with a question to say enter your name oh let me just leave everything in yeah lowercase there enter your name then the next is age another input enter your age because age is going to be an integer and we want them to enter integers we're going to put int here so it just converts what they put there to integer so your future age in five years is going to be let's say future your future age is going to in five years is going to be whatever age you put plus five so this is going to be age which is a variable an integer plus five so what do we print out i'm going to be using a formatted string f string hello um i'm going to be putting name whatever name it is that you provided to us hello i'll put an exclamation mark and say in five years in five years you will be and i'll have my the future age i have the future age years old full stop let's test this to test this i'm going to be running it here and i'm going to click on run it has asked us to provide the name and the name i'm going to say david that means david age of course i'm not going to tell you my age so i'm going to be using something let's say i'm i'm 15 we use this if i'm 15 is it hello david in five years you'll be 20 years old so you could try that out Try to write a code on your own without looking at my example and maybe you could follow through the example and get, a, get on with it. This code will be provided in the description and make sure to follow through to day two. See you.